morning from Bali and Kat Kibera. And what I would love to share with you today is weight gain and protection. So you may know or not know that I had anorexia and bulimia for 20 plus years. Um, I started considering myself fat when I was four years old and put myself on my first starvation diet when I was nine. And for those of you who've suffered from anorexia and are in recovery, you know that, that part of it is a way to start to gain control in your life. Like you felt like you were out of control, that others had power over you, and it, it's your one attempt at trying to gain control. And so part of your recovery is, is what is a, a healthier way for you to own your authority or be in your power and to not feel like you're a victim to other people's whims and to circumstance. And for my friends who, who've been bulimic, you know, part of it is not allowing ourselves or not feeling safe enough to feel our feelings and, and a, a rejection of self in some way. And also feeling like there are things that you just need to get out of you and you don't know any other way. There's a lot that I can say about this, but quick overview. And um, there's some overlapping as well. So one thing you might discover and one thing I saw was that although I would you know, would never starve myself again or push myself you know, to my limits in an exercise way that's unhealthy or um, binge crazy amounts of food and, and, per and find different ways to purge them, there was still that undercurrent of, of emotional eating that would happen. And I just want to make a note because I do work with women who you know, are active in eating disorders and how to get recovery. Sometimes we will get mad at ourselves because we find ourselves binging. And one really practical thing is that if you're restricting, at some point your body's going to binge because it's hungry, right? So, um, you know, oftentimes we'll think, oh, I just need to get better with my diet and then I wouldn't binge. But if you're restricting yourself, you're setting yourself up for a binge. What I want to talk about now, though, is what to do when you find yourself emotional eating. So it may not even be like a full binge, but just that part of us that might start to reach out for those extra whatevers. You know, we all have different things that we um, might just want to eat extras of. And, and to be very clear, um, it's okay to eat. It's okay to eat. <laughs> it's okay to eat. It's okay to have pleasure in food. It, it's, I mean, food is pleasurable. It's, it's, a, it's a ritual. It's a ceremony. I mean, it's ne necessary for survival, um, but it also is a ceremony of, I want to be here on this planet. I, I, I choose to partake in the pleasure of aliveness. Okay, so it's okay to eat. But what I'm naming is when we're feeling uncomfortable and we're looking towards food for a fix. And for those of us where it's, it's, it is one of our addictions, it's something where we have to be so tender because we can just get so mad at ourselves that we started reaching for food and we're like, oh my God, I don't have the self-control. What's wrong with me? And, and part of what's missing is that we are looking for some sort of soothing that we haven't yet gotten elsewhere. So I work with a lot of people who've had a lot of trauma. And what we work with is how to start to unravel the, pain, the victim response, how to recognize when our wounds still dominate, and to give ourselves that which we never were given. So for those of us who didn't receive other forms of nurturing that felt safe, consistent, reliable, then the one safe nurturing will be food. There's going to be like that, that automatic uh, pleasure that's given. And that's why even like 
will usually go towards like uh, the sugars and the fats for some sort of nurturing. It's kind of like breast milk, right? Like we're still looking for mama. And so part of the work will be how do we start to wire in that mother energy that we might not have gotten elsewhere. And it's going to be new feelings and also feeling safe enough to receive. So without realizing it, we may, may not be receiving energy from other parts of our life because it feels scary to receive. And so the one place where it's a little bit more of a neutral receiving would be with food. So there's going to be that part like, oh, I need some soothing. How can I start to give myself that? If food actually soothed you at the level that you wanted, and I'm talking beyond like the necessity of eating, but like that emotional soothing, that emotional grounding, that emotional support, if food could actually give you that, it wouldn't be a problem. But it's not. But still there's that compulsion of that's the only way I feel safe to receive, so I'm just going to keep going there because I don't know any other way. And, and it's very unconscious and subtle patterns of how do I start to recognize that life can hold me and soothe me even if my history hasn't contained that. So it is new possibilities and a new world. The other piece will be I'm looking for a way to numb or protect myself. And so I don't feel like I'm protected or can protect myself in any other way. My only compulsion would be I need to put some layers on. And one thing I've personally noticed as someone who's highly sensitive and has a very open system and very empathic is that in ret later on when I find myself like eating a bunch if I look backwards, it's something was done or said that didn't feel right for me, but I didn't set the boundary, say no, stop it in some way, leave when I needed to. There was some part of me that remained unconscious in that moment and felt forced to receive it. And so I took it in, even though it truly was poison or not right for me, out of integrity. And so later on, when I'm alone again and I feel safe enough to catch myself, that's when my system is starting to speak to me to say, that wasn't good, that doesn't feel good. So there was that part of me that's looking for that protection or comfort. So the big work, it's not about what's the next diet or exercise and how can I be unkind to myself because I feel like I failed myself again or fucked up? It's how can I start to turn towards myself with a lot more tenderness and caring? You know, one of my taglines I find myself saying in class is, I've never met anyone who's too kind to herself, myself included, right? It's like, like, like to me, life is the love story. And how do we know that we're loved? And how can we allow ourselves to really feel that love and turn towards ourselves with love. Not rigidity, not perfectionism, not how can we improve ourselves all the time. And then the other piece is how can I allow myself to set my boundaries when I need to? And you know, your your personal reasons for why it's hard for you to set boundaries, it's gonna be personal. But in some way in your family or ancestral history and it could be in the womb you weren't and it could be something that was modeled by a parent you weren't able to hold your boundaries you didn't get to be an authority for your own system so one of the ways that we get to set boundaries is to not let someone else be more important to allow ourselves to exist as much. And if you have a history of, of self-harm, uh, and outside of eating disorders as well, usually it's like there's that compulsion of making other people more important 
and and putting yourself less than that may or may not be true but i'm curious if that's true for you do other people somehow hold more power than you yourself or do you allow yourself to exist as the divine as someone who also is as equally important so that when something doesn't feel right for you instead of taking it in there's a way that you can feel oh this doesn't feel right for me and you set your boundary now, there's a lot that I can share on this, and, and it's part of what I do in my work when I'm doing energy trainings, um, also the, the eating disorder uh, breakthroughs that I run, but also just energy trainings. So what usually happens is I'm so curious about your relationship with your voice and, and what happens. Do you go into freeze? Is it something where you're able to say, hey, I didn't actually ask for your opinion right now, or that doesn't agree with me, or no, I actually don't want this. Because oftentimes what happens, instead of like putting the energy outwards and, and somehow like taking the attention off ourselves and actually saying like, I, don't, I didn't ask for your opinion, I don't want this, um, we actually just go into freeze a little bit and, and just absorb and absorb and absorb. And so later on, you're looking for a way to like get that energy out of your system. Which is a side note, that's why I think I love physical movement because it is a healthy way to start to move things out of your system, especially if you're really connected with yourself on a more subtle level of how you're feeling. And it's like, oh, you're using that physical, but you're also feeling your emotional and mental bodies and your, your subtle energetic bodies. So that voice activation is really essential. And, you know, what I also find interesting is even for those of us who may not emotionally eat, the weight gain that suddenly happens. And part of it is because we don't feel safe. Um, so one thing that used to happen to me when I used to run trainings is I would, I would complain to my assistant, because I, I can be vain, you know. Uh, I would say, damn, you know, like I, I always seem to put like 10 pounds on like during these longer trainings that I hold. And, and so my, my own personal work was, how can I hold myself and not absorb other people's energy? And how can I allow, for example, you know, for those of us who run trainings, you know this, um, and you, when you do a lot of work with other people, there's a lot of pain that might be coming out of your students or clients. And how do I let them have their process, because they're paying for it, right? Like that, that's why they're working with you. But also not, not take it in, not feel like I need to carry it, not, not feel like there will be some very subtle unconscious ways that we think that our job is to hold other people's pain. And that's not that. It's like, how do we let it move through us like water? How do we let it burn through us? You know, we don't want to hold our own pain. We want to transform it. We don't want to hold other people's pain. And it can show up through as tension and pain and sickness in the body. It also can literally show up as weight gain. Um, so I, I used to be fascinated. I mean, even like I started talking about it openly with my students, like, look at how my system is shape shifting. You know, we, we actually don't need to do this. So finding that stability and steadiness where we don't allow our own fears to cause us to give up ourselves and as a result, shape shift all the time. You know, that, that's part of the work. Um, so I had one client in particular who, um, I remember she came to me and she, and she was overweight and, and found that, I mean, she was eating very limited calories, was like exercising four hours a day. And, and she didn't come to me for weight gain, but I just, I was kind of asking her like, oh wow, like what's your Fitbit all about? You know, I was just trying to figure out what was going on. And the two things that we figured out was one, she actually hated exercise and she hated herself. So I'm like, all right, that, that's one way that we, we can't let go if we've got that pattern. And I'm like, can you start to only let yourself do movement that brings pleasure and, and not that you're doing or you're forcing yourself because that's not creating a joyful environment. And you're, you're still gonna be holding on because you're still gonna feel scared because you're constantly being forced. And then we started to do the, the deeper emotional work that on, on an energetic level of what was being held in. And it was really fascinating to see 
And again, her intention and my intention actually wasn't about her losing weight. She just wanted to check out this energy work and see what happened. But it was really beautiful to see how her system started to let go. And so the chronic tension and pain that was in her body started to release. And also she was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm starting to lose weight. And I'm actually exercising less. I'm doing you know, what's pleasurable. And I'm actually letting myself eat again. So we, we do want to just demystify you know, diet culture because it's a fuckload of lies. And to look at, especially those of you who are highly sensitive, you know, when you're holding on, it's not because you're a failure and not disciplined enough. What else is going on? You know, what else is going on in your life? You know, when you're not feeling happy, your body's going to express it. When you're feeling fearful, your body's going to express it. So if you find that there is weight gain happening, I would also look on that emotional level of, of is there some fear um, or sadness that's happening? Um, for those of us who are more ka kapha, you know, in Ayurvedic terms, kapha is the holding on to pain in the body. And, and, and what do we need to do to be able to start to feel safe enough to let it go? Um, I actually got a really cool message uh, from a client, and this has happened before, where um, when they, they start doing voice lessons and are more creative, and also one client I had where she found that she was just standing up for herself. We did a lot of work around her voice of holding her space and saying no, and actually not just letting people say shit to her and her taking it in, actually her like holding her space. Um, all of these people had thyroid issues. And where suddenly they found without thyroid medication that their thyroid was improving. And that's my own fascination, you know, where, where I'm like, huh, you know, on an energetic level, where can we start to heal ourselves? So I'm not saying go off your thyroid medication, but I have had four clients over the, over the years that balanced out their thyroid because they actually started to do work with their voice, whether it was more creative, whether it was being more honest, or whether it was setting their own boundaries. And you might have heard me in other videos talk about, if you've trained with me, um, I do talk about voice and, and how our voice will shape shift when we're out of our power. I'm obviously really grounded right now. Like, hear how vo low my voice is. If you listen to videos of me, which I don't know if there are any, um, but of, of videos of me back like prior to 2008, my voice, my voice was higher. It, I, I, I can't even recreate it right now, but it, it was much more up in my heart because I was scared to go down into my pelvis because. I lived in fear all the time and I didn't really want to ground because that felt scary because I didn't really want to be here. My only way to feel safe was to please others. So it's, it is fascinating to feel those times when our voice is starting to shift. A postural change will happen. Your mental body will shift as well and your emotional body. You'll be speaking from a wound. So that curiosity that we get to have without ever thinking that we made a mistake or we fucked up because we all carry wounds there's no one on this planet that isn't carrying wounds that that are wanting to heal is can we be curious around you know certain chronic pains that come up when we're ready to make a true shift in our perception of reality then we are able to go beyond the physical healing of let me just take this medicine, even herbal medicine or, or alternative medicine. Let me move into that more subtle energetic part of myself where I can see some of the roots of the wound. And am I ready to transform that pain? I personally, because I used to get uh, chronic urinary tract infections, a lot of women here, I, I think you know what I'm talking about, um, and, and there was a lot of old fear and a lot of um, self-degradation degradation and, and victimhood held in there. And so when I really could start to shift it 
was when I could really own some of that deeper pain, both from this lifetime and previous ones. So I, I, I got into this work like in 1997. I was, I was young uh, because I was in pain. And, and the beautiful portal that I saw was that we're more than what we think. And, and how can we really own this light and power that we are? So please, as always, Take what resonates, throw out the rest, and I'll see you soon. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.